Thank you, everyone, again, for joining us today. We wanted to show you a project that we put together recently, uh, which we think is a, a way of helping people to understand some surprising trends and facts about hate crimes, also hopefully to prevent or reduce their, their frequency in the yeah. future. I didn't know we were gonna have to go after Donut World, though. I, yeah, well. <laughs> So, no donuts. No donuts. But, uh, next best thing. Uh, so, real quick, um, my name is Sony Green, and I'm co-founder and director of business development, Kinoviz. And our focus is developing data visualization tools for virtual reality. So we work with enterprise clients and institutional clients, like Box and Rally Health and uh, NIH. Um, and I'm Britton Heller. I'm the director for technology and society for the Anti-Defamation League. In my, my past life, I was a federal prosecutor, and I prosecuted genocide and war crimes at the International Criminal Court and handled all the technology related to that. And so now I run the Center for Technology and Society. And what we try to do is we try to bring civil rights into a digital environment. And what this means is that we've been working with exponential technologies, in particular, artificial intelligence, the um, video gaming related technology, and AR, VR, XR. One example is what you'll see up there. That is, um, that, that's an example of our work in artificial intelligence. In partnership with UC Berkeley, we've built out a machine learning enabled mechanism that can create community-centric definitions of hate speech from the perspective of targeted groups. So that um, it combines the latest in social science with computer science and really fills, fills the gap that, that we see with tech companies where we don't want them to tell us what hate speech is, but we want them to be responsive to user concerns. And so the Online Hate Index is a tool that helps them do that. In, um, in AR, we are very, very proud to have, a, um, to have a partnership with the Dr. Reverend Patricia Novick, who's here today, and working with her on the project that Tom, um, that Tom introduced about connecting Latin and African American communities in Chicago with an interactive AR-based community tour. What this, what this project will do is literally create common ground that bridges the virtual and the, the, ta um, and the tangible environment that these communities inhabit every day. And the third is working in VR. Um, we, we are focusing on VR in particular because we think that this is a way to get communities to really interact with each other. We're building a narrative-based experience that will when it's done, it's going to focus on what civil rights mean in the past and how you can connect that trajectory to some of the controversies we have today and shows people that using your voice is the best way to make a difference. We've also been working with the gaming industry. And so in October, we, we had our first game jam. I really like the retro graphics. Um, through this, this was a pilot to see if we could engage people in the gaming industry with helping us to promote um, ADL's anti-bias and anti-discrimination curriculum. It turned out really well. We had participants on seven, uh, in seven countries, four continents, three simultaneous US locations, and we came back with 33 games that embodied this, uh, this type of curriculum. My favorite was, um, was called Mean Bullies, Bean Bullies, and it was about a jelly bean world that showed what would happen. Um, you were looking down at the jelly beans, fighting each other, playing on a playground, bullying each other, and you had an option to intervene. And so if you, if you hit bash a bully, you could bash a bully, and it was really gratifying, and then it made the whole situation worse. <laughs> so it, it, it mirrored what actually happens when you use violence to intervene in a situation in a jelly bean world. <laughs> Uh, we've also been working with the Game Developers, um, the International Game Developers Association. So we've been putting on diversity and inclusion workshops for people in the gaming industry, focusing on the content of games and in relationships between developers and companies. So what I'll show you next is actually the, oh, actually no, I guess this is uh, the FBI, the, the original FBI data that you sent us for the 
project. Yeah, I think we can all look at that and agree that that's pretty boring. <laughs> uh, this, this is what the hate crime statistics from the government side look like. They're Excel spreadsheets. The FBI, um, ADL has a special relationship with the FBI. We train every incoming FBI agent on anti-bias, anti-discrimination education. We helped write the first federal anti-hate crime statute, the Matthew Burr, James Shepard Anti-Hate um, Crimes Act. And so since then, we've, we've really been a partner with them trying to figure out how to reduce hate crimes and how to get an accurate picture about what this phenomenon looks like in American society. So the FBI reports come they're released every year and they span two years back. So this is 2016 hate crime statistics, but they're really telling you what happened in 2014. So now I'll show you uh, how we like to look at data at Kinnaviz, which is a little bit different. Um, this is a project, this is actually the first project we ever did and it was uh, built for a conference to be displayed on a large screen and uh, interface with Microsoft Connect, but it also ran in the Oculus DK1. Uh, real quick, what you're seeing here is collaboration patterns within different industries on the box file sharing platform. And so uh, I don't know if anyone can identify which one is the software industry, but uh, it's the messy one. Uh, anyhow, so this is uh, sort of exemplary of the, the approach that we take to data visualization at Kinaviz, which is we want to create something that is not only informative, but engaging, and we believe that VR is an especially, well, as you all know, <laughs> VR is an especially powerful tool for the engagement. And so we sort of divide things into two categories, uh, storytelling and the investigative visual analytics tools that you use to, to dig through your data. And this is more on the storytelling front, as is the, the project we're gonna show you a little later on. Uh, but the emphasis on uh, experience comes from Kinaviz Origin, which is actually is a spin-off from an arts nonprofit called Kinetech Arts, which is a, it's a performance collective that was founded by our CEO and it's focused on the intersection between dance and technology. They have a, an open lab every Wednesday, you're all invited. Uh, but what Kinetech Arts uh, sort of inspired and has continued to allow for our team is to experiment with new technologies and to try things that it may not be clear their utility until we've actually done them. And that is part of how we ended up bringing VR into our data visualizations. Now, can I just see like a show of hands, like how many people consider themselves data scientists or work with data regularly? Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of buzz about big data and just the sort of meteoric explosion of data these days. There's a, you know, a statistic I hear cited a lot is in the past two years, 90% uh, of the world's data was created versus all the years leading up to. And of course, that status from 2013, and people keep using it for the past few years, so I don't know where we're at now. But the point is, we have a staggering amount of data being created every day, and there are a lot of, it, it covers every industry, every cause, every imaginable uh, use, and making sense of that data is a real challenge, especially identifying relationships between data. And so, as you can see in the right, things tend to get really crowded in 2D. You have kind of a limited amount of real estate on a screen before you just can't make sense of what you're seeing. So, one of the most powerful tools for dealing with big data now is machine learning. And Sometimes in, in the data world, you see machine learning is treated kind of like a magic bullet, and it's not there yet. I mean, it's, it's an essential tool, as you know, you, you work with, and, uh, but it still requires a human teacher for now. <laughs> and uh, so, so that's why visualizing data effectively is so uh, crucial at this moment. And with VR, 
we, you know, as, as Tom was mentioning earlier, we're able to tap into parts of the brain that just aren't accessible when you're looking at a 2D screen. And, you know, the idea is that reduces cognitive load. Uh, and to build all of our apps, we're actually using the WebXR standard. So everything is running in browser. Uh, and we, we like WebXR for a lot of reasons. Of course, it's, you know, already cloud-friendly, uh, device and platform agnostic. Uh, and for data purposes, you know, you already have connectors to all your existing data tools. Um, the other thing that ties in with what, what we're about to show you is uh, the ability to do sort of hybrid interfaces between uh, VR and 2D. And we use that to create kind of a guided tour experience for. Yeah, so, so the way this project started was as a result of a hackathon that we did with DataKind um, back last year, where we wanted to take all of the FBI hate crimes data that was to that point and um, make it digestible so that the public could have a better sense about what was going on. So um, with the hackathon, we digitized all of the data that was sitting in Excel spreadsheets and not available publicly, but not in an accessible form. We made a, a web map with it, which was pretty cool. But after learning about Kinebiz and their capability to really help us grapple with this data in a new way, uh, we, we decided to ask for their help. So, uh, and, and one thing, you know, uh, not to brag, I guess, but it was really exciting as we had people come through from the ADL who were used to working with this data to see how much enthusiasm there was. Uh, it was uh, David C. Friedman mm -hmm. saying that, you know, he, he works with the, the figures every day, but seeing it this way, he had a much deeper appreciation of it. So it was, it was nice to know that it was having the, the desired impact. Yeah, we, we had one educator who teaches hate crime laws, and he, we put him in the headset, and he said that he never, he never realized that there were so many laws in his state, because he only focused on a few that could encapsulate this type of activity that weren't the typical hate crime laws. What the, what, when you go into the rig, um, if you come to the demo from 11 to, to 12, you'll also see a couple of of really interesting insights that we're able to pull out for law enforcement to use this as an advocacy tool. The most important story about hate crimes is, is the fact that more reported hate crimes is a positive social outcome. And that's really hard to enforce when you're talking to the police. We saw some trends in the data over the last 12 years. So we saw anti-Muslim hate crimes in the whole body of data stayed static across the whole set. And what that means is that when bad things are happening, people aren't going to the police. We saw two things that, in combination with each other, actually resulted in a decreasing number of per capita hate crimes over time. And we were only able to see this through the data visualization and through the data analysis. And it was, if you have laws on the books, on a state or community level, that criminalize this activity, and if you mandate reporting. When you go into the rig, we will be able to show you all of the cities and states that do not report their hate crimes. They'll either report zero or decline to report because they're not required to by federal law. This doesn't mean that these places are safer or have less hate crimes than other cities. It just means that we don't have access to that information. So building on this, um, we have a few next steps that we're gonna be looking at. So what you're seeing right now is actually Kinova's first official product that's in closed beta, which is called GraphXR. And what GraphXR is is a, uh, a network graph exploration tool. So being able to find the relationships between uh, complex networks. And this is a tool that we're hoping to, to make available to the ADL to uh, you know, the, as I talked about before, the storytelling versus the investigative side, this is the investigative capabilities that we're building now. And we're starting to see the data visualization work have an actual impact. 
Yesterday, the Police Foundation announced that 54 law enforcement agencies across the US have ex accepted a challenge from ADL to release open data on hate and bias-motivated crimes. This will make the data more available before the FBI hate crime stats are, are available. And the most exciting thing for me is that cities and states that previously reported zero or declined to report are now going to be um, participating in this, so we will have that information going forward. This is part of our outreach and our partnerships, but I think it also demonstrates law enforcement's commitment to fighting these crimes and increasing public understanding. And it shows the impact that the data visualization and the VR work is having in persuading these agencies to be more open and transparent with their socially oriented data. Yeah, so this is a, a collaboration that has been really uh, educational and <coughs> enjoyable for us, and, and we're looking forward to seeing what we can do together in the future. Uh, right now in the future, I'm going to head over to booth 637, anyone who wants to see the demo, it's uh, yeah. 11 to 12. And every city and state, every, every community with over 100,000 people in it is represented on the map. So come see your hometown, come see your state, come see what it looks like, come see how it changes over time, how, how different hate crimes are targeting different groups, and come away with an understanding about how you can engage civically. Thank you, Sony and Brittany. There you go. Before you guys head off to the booth to set up for your demo, the Virtual World Society is really proud and honored to be working with you and feature your work here, and we'd like to give you uh, the certificate awesome. of uh, your Thank accomplishments, you so as well as uh, award you the amazing, here, look at this, the uh, Nextent medallion for each of you for your amazing contributions Thank to you. the good of humanity. Thank you.